Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of fan-made cards made by Moo Moo Brown, covering, I believe, all the nine classes, as well as a few neutral cards, so we'll just go ahead and jump straight into them. Uh, first up is going to be the Headless Horseman, a 8-mana 410 neutral minion. Charge any minion killed by this minion is summoned on your side of the field. Uh, honestly, uh, I did kind of look at this card earlier, and I thought that this is pretty damn strong. Um, what I would imagine is a scenario where you're like going up against Ragnaros, you've already done some damage to it, or maybe you have a weapon in hand, and in conjunction with something else, you use this, you kill the Ragnaros, you get a new legendary on your side of the field. Could be very, very strong with scenarios like that, and then even when you are running it into a big legendary, like pretty much 90% of the cards are not going to one shot this so you're still gonna have a minion on your side of the board and that's a pretty big deal so thinking of this like as a Sylvanas or along the lines of a Sylvanas but that can basically trigger immediately in a lot of ways uh, simply because it has the charge makes this really really strong and I think it might be kind of scary for the game probably would go in almost every control deck I think Next up, Bird of the Beast, 4 mana, neutral beast, 3-3 three, three stats. Battle cry, add a random beast to your hand for each beast on the battlefield. This is similar to cards like Infest, um, Ball of Spiders, or uh, even like a Starving Buzzard Unleash the Hound combo, which hasn't really been played for a long time ever since the mana nerf to that. Um, and I think the problem with cards like this is you have to be really careful about how much extra firepower you give hunters because... Back in the day where you could just unleash uh, unleash the hounds and play Starving Buzzard and get three or five card draws, a hunter would just have so much power to keep going. Um, likewise, having one of these in the hand, being able to basically draw two or three beasts has a lot of power potential there for sure. And uh, I mean, it also applies to Beast Druid in a sense, since that would be more of a tempo-based deck, so... Overall, I think this card would just be really, really strong in those types of decks, and Midrange Hunter is already broken enough, so I don't really know if it needs it. Um, it does push Beast Synergy, though, and, like, Beast Druid, at least, isn't super, super good yet, so with a card like this, it would probably get there. Uh, next up, Deathwing Bot. I thought this was kind of cute. A 3-mana, three 3-3. Three, three. Battle cry add a spare part to your hand for each friendly mech on the battlefield. So kind of bringing back those mech decks or re-establishing them with an alternative. Spare parts already really good for mages specifically. So um, being able to trigger it with like a flame waker is going to be pretty good. And you know spare parts even just as a one mana spell aren't terrible. Also works with Yogg Saron in some other ways. So I think this would be a pretty strong card in mech decks specifically. But uh, not horribly game-breaking. I mean, at best, you're going to get like two or three spare parts, which is pretty good. But that's not always going to happen, and you do play other non-mechs in those types of decks. So, I mean, this card's maybe pretty well-balanced, where the previous ones are really strong. Uh, next up, Masked Hero. Uh, Battle Cry, add a random secret to your hand for a two-mana 2-2, two -two, similar to like a uh, Dark Peddler or the uh, Rogue Death Rattle Dude that gives you a random... Uh, a random card from your opponent's class. Uh, I, th I thought this card was kind of balanced, I would say. But then I, I realized random secret doesn't mean a paladin secret. So you can actually get some really good secrets from this. Uh, like, say, a uh, mirror entity, a nice block, those kinds of cards. So I would say this is probably on the strong side, which might be okay. I mean, if it's as strong as a dark peddler, is that super bad for the game? Not necessarily. Um, because it's adding a card to your hand, it's also good for late game control decks because it's not going to bring you close to the fatigue by drawing cards through your deck. So overall, it's a pretty solid minion. And uh, I mean, would be interesting to see how like Paladin goes when you have Ice Block sometimes or when you have uh, Freezing Trap sometimes. Probably really good. Soulbinder Tulani, Priest Legendary, 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, destroy all minions with 3 or less attack. Uh, looking at this card, it is very, very powerful. Um, usually, about half the minions that people actually play do have 3 or less attack. 3 is a really nice number. It's a lot better than the 2 attack that you would get with the Shadow Ward Horror. 2 attack, there's not that many minions people play, but 3 attack? I mean, there's a lot of 2 and 3 drops that this can just outright annihilate. It does work on both sides of the field, but... 
generally, if you're playing a control priest, you're not going to have that many minions on your side of the field. You may even want to get rid of a Northshire Cleric if that's what you have on the board to prevent overdrawing. So overall, um, just being a 5 mana AoE removal card that also gives you a 3-3 is very, very powerful. Um, I would assume that the battle cry does not trigger on against this minion as well. So it's all the minions on the field and then you get a 3-3 on the board. But overall, uh, that is an incredibly powerful card and would be played in every control priest. Pretty much period. Next up, enraged priest, 3 mana, 2-6. Nice stats. Whenever this minion is healed, give it attack instead of health. Note that it's 3 mana, not 4 mana. So that is actually really good stats. Um, now, getting attack instead of health, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, Priest, yes, usually benefits from healing their minions and basically stalling the game out or getting extra value out of that. But Holy Champion is not too bad of a card. The 4 mana 3 5 that gets plus 2 every, uh, plus 2 attack every time a minion is healed. And if you combine that with this on the board, then Priest becomes an incredibly deadly class. Uh, Holy Champion. I would argue it's already in the realms of like a Frothing Berserker. So having basically four Frothing Berserker-like cards in your deck at once with Holy Circle of Healing and the Priest Hero Power in general, this is an incredibly dangerous card. Um, probably would make Burst Priests a pretty viable deck, honestly. And I think in just about any Priest deck, you would just run this as a 2-6. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous as it is. Um, any card that has extra health and really doesn't have a drawback, it's going to dominate. <laughs> Pretty as simple as that. Uh, Drake Archaeologist. Two mana, two, two, priest, battle cry, discover a random dragon. So the discover fact is really, really nice. And especially in a dragon deck, that's going to be very powerful. You could get like uh, Deathwing Dragon Lord, Yaceras, or you could just get like a four mana, three, six taunt with the Twilight Guardian. There's a lot of good priest uh, uh, dragons that work well in priest decks, especially for dragon priest decks. But I think a card like this is strong enough that you would just play it in any priest deck because uh, either you play the um, Museum Curator, which is a 1-2 for 2 mana, and that gets you a death rattle minion. I think discovering a dragon is just about as strong as that, but plus you get an extra attack on top of that. So this is just a very powerful card that would be played in uh, most decks, but would be 100% guaranteed required inside of a Dragon Priest deck. But I get they're trying to make it something like a Dark Peddler type card. Um, I don't really know if every single class needs one of those, because then it kind of becomes, well, why not just make it a neutral card or something, but hey. Okay, next up, two mana... Uh, pre-spell, Penance, a deal 3 damage to an enemy or restore 3 health to a friendly character. Uh, you could kind of look at it as like a stronger light, uh, Dark Bomb, which is not in the meta currently, but that was a 2 mana Warlock spell. Um, but of course, Warlock spells are supposed to be weaker because as a class, they have a stronger hero power, so it's not such a big deal that the option is restore 3 health to a friendly character. And I would say this code's overall pretty Decently balanced, probably would see some play for sure, uh, but not not game breaking. I think it's a card that's in the realms of something like Frostbolt, which is fine. Okay, eight mana warlock legendary Tychondrius, five four stats demon draw card uh, draw card effects. Wait, hold on. Draw a card instead of discarding them, and obviously they're talking about cards like Doom God, which are like discard two cards. So if Tychondrius manages to live on the field, which he won't then you can play cards like uh, Soulfire or Doom Guard and start drawing cards. I mean, what you would probably do is wait till turn 10, play Tachondrius and double Soulfire, which will deal 8 damage and draw 2 cards. And that's fine. Um, probably really good with Emperor Tharizan. Uh, wouldn't expect Doom Guard to actually get any value off of that. You, you just can't expect a minion like this to survive one turn even. It's pretty much going to die immediately. In which case, it's kind of mediocre, right? I mean, like 8 mana draw 2... Uh, you could kind of look at it at like 8 mana, draw 2, and remove the negative effects of your soul fires in that perfect setup. Still, kind of iffy. It's not super bad. And it's not that good though. I mean, 5-4 stats. Millhouse Mana Storm has a pretty sweet effect, but it's a 6 mana 4-4. Four, four. This is 8 mana 5-4. I don't know, this probably wouldn't see that much play, in honesty. But I, I like the idea of making discard decks suck less. 
Chaos Bolt. Destroy a minion. Take damage based on the minion's health when it dies. So it's a three mana removal. Kind of compare it to Deadly Shot or something like that, where you remove the randomness, but you're guaranteed to take some damage. Um, another way of looking at it would be a lot like a, um, a Corruption card, which is one mana, basically destroy a minion in the following turn. And no one really plays Silence anymore, so that would usually go off. But you're paying two extra mana... And you're basically still going to take the damage of that minion hitting you in the face, but not allowing it to trade. It's okay. I don't necessarily know if it's a super great card. Taking extra damage as a warlock is kind of risky too, because you're already taking so much with your life taps and letting your opponent beat your face in if you're going to be playing like a Reno lock. Um, but overall, I think it's a pretty decent card. Pretty cool. Um, not sure if it's super viable, but uh, it's definitely an option. Could compare it to Siphon Soul, where it's like, you remove the minion for three less mana, but instead of healing, you take a bunch of damage. And that is a meaningful distinction there. Summoner of Evil. Five mana, five three, battle cry, draw a card. If you if it's a demon, put it into play. Uh, seems pretty strong if you're going to be playing a demon deck specifically. Otherwise, it's kind of like an issue with Drake, right? Um, the problem is... Uh, there aren't too many super good demons that are really being run, but this could bring demon decks back into something that's a little bit more serious. So it's not too bad of a card to have out there, and I'd say probably pretty decently balanced. Really strong in demon decks, obviously, but it's like a bad as you would Drake otherwise, so it's it's pretty fine for the game. And demon decks would need something like that. Molten Infernal, notably a demon, 2 mana, 3, 2, deal 2 damage to an enemy and discard a random card. You could play this with that Tychondrius, but I don't think that's enough to really make Tychondrius super good. Um, unless you're going to Tharzan beforehand, then maybe it would work. But uh, deal 2 damage to an enemy is pretty strong for uh, Battle Cry. It's kind of like a uh, 1 mana less SI7 agent, minus 1 health, but you do discard a card. Um... So yeah, overall, that's really strong. Probably would be played in zoo decks a lot. Uh, probably would be played in demon decks as well. I mean, um, yeah, I think just dealing two damage for free and then discarding a card is usually worth it for a warlock, right? You could kind of think of it as like, you have to spend two mana in the future to life tap to deal two damage right now. And two mana deal two damage isn't too bad. As long as you're playing something that's kind of like a zoo and doesn't need every card to win the game like an ultra control warlock, I think you're fine. Usok the Mighty. Seven mana, four, four. Battle cry cast swipe on a random enemy. Death rattle cast savage roar. Um, so basically, you're like playing a four, four for four mana and getting a swipe for three mana. And that's pretty solid in terms of value. No, it is random, so it could screw you over by swiping the opponent's face. The death battle effect is sort of interesting, uh, because it's, unless your opponent literally can't do anything to this, it's probably not going to really go off on your turn, and a death rat, a savage draw on your opponent's turn is pretty meaningless. So overall, that's really hard to trigger, unless you're going to give this charge somehow, and I don't think Druid has a way to do that right now. So overall, this is an interesting card. It's uh, probably not quite good enough, but if there were other cards that could kind of complement this in the same way that Fandral Staghelm has cards that complement it, then maybe it could be a more serious um, card in the future if it was actually added to the game. It's interesting that it's a beast, though. Okay, uh, two mana, Rebirth. Destroy a friendly minion and revive it as a random beast. So interestingly, that has synergy here with Ursok the Mighty, because you could play this and play two more mana to basically get a Savage Roar effect off. Uh, not exactly value, but I mean, sometimes ridiculous combos like that can win you the game. Um, I'm not really sure when you'd want to destroy minion. I, I guess if you had like a token druid deck, that would be pretty good, because you could destroy like a Violet uh, a Violet Apprentice, a 1-1, one, one, and it may come back as like a Core Hound, and two mana to upgrade a minion by like 12 sats, pretty damn good. Now that only happens some of the time, so... Is this good? Would require some testing, or at least math, but... It's alright, it's an option. It's kind of in the same vein as, like, Ancestral, uh... The thing that brings your minions back as a shaman when they die, or the one that just rebirths it immediately. Kind of comparable to that. Graceful Moonkin, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Choose one, draw a random beast from your deck, or give a friendly beast plus one plus one. 
The friendly beast plus one plus one usually kind of sucks, so often you would just play this as draw a beast. And, um... I'd say that's pretty decent. Kind of like the tomb spider, but instead of discovering a beast, you're drawing one. But it also has the versatility of having that potential plus one plus one, so it's not too bad. Does work kind of with uh, Fandral Staghelm, though probably wouldn't be like what you're looking for in terms of the synergy you really want. But overall, uh, fairly well balanced. It's another option for beast cards. Note though that it's not a beast itself. Not sure if that was a mistake or intended, but yeah, worth noting. Six mana, Roaring Bear. Three, three... Six mana, charge, cast, savage, roar, beast. So you're paying basically three mana for a savage roar and three mana for a charging 3-3 three, three. in one card. That's a lot of value uh, for sure. Um, a 3-3 three, three charger is already really strong for three mana. And getting two cards in one is really strong. So overall, this is just a really powerful card. Could be used for game finishing. Would mean you don't really need to put savage roar in your deck because usually savage roar is what you use to finish the game. Um, and in itself, you're really, like, uh, paying six mana and getting a 5-3 charger off the bat. And, uh, for six mana, you can get a 5-2 charger, the, uh, the Reckless Rocketeer. And that doesn't even cast Savage Roar for your other minions or your face. Really, it's like a 7-3 charger because you, as the hero, also get the plus two damage off Savage Roar. Plus, it can be more than that. So, yeah, it's just a mega powerful card and uh, potentially game-breaking. The fact it's a beast isn't really relevant. You could just play it in a token druid as well, and it would be just as good. Queen Ashara. Five mana, five, six. Whenever a spell is cast, add it to your deck. Mage card. Uh, in terms of fatigue games, this is pretty much insane. Uh, a 5-6 is already really strong, um, almost borderline good enough to be played to begin with because of cards like, uh, what's it called, the Pit Fighter, I believe, 5 mana, 5-6, does nothing else. And it has a pretty strong effect. It's going to get you a couple cards in your deck, almost certainly. And even if it doesn't, it's already 5-6. The only downside I could think of, really, is that any spell that gets cast is added to your deck. So if it's a card you really don't want to see, it could, you could get kind of punished for that. Like, for instance, if you, the opponent Rogue plays Sprint or something, and then it adds Sprint to your deck, and you really don't want Sprint for some reason, then drawing that Sprint may kind of screw you over in the same way Excavated Evil going in your opponent's deck can kind of screw you over. But in general, I think this is a very, very strong Mage Legendary. Probably would see a lot of play. Living Bomb. Three mana, deal one damage to a minion. When it dies, deal th three damage to all minions. Um, assuming you can get that minion dead, which is very likely as a mage with Fire Blast, with other spells from your hand, with having any minion on the field, it's kind of like a three mana almost Flame Strike, which is ridiculous. You could even just say it's a three mana deal... 3 plus damage to everything on the field, as long as you are going to spend 2 extra mana on a ping. And a 5 mana deal, 3 damage is already strong. But in perfect scenarios, 3 damage for 3 mana is really strong. So that's a very powerful AoE card. Um, probably too strong for the game, honestly. Uh, probably should cost more mana than that, or deal less damage. Ice Mage, 3 mana, 3, 4. Battle Cry, Freeze an Enemy. Um... Freeze is a pretty good effect, and the fact it's not random, it's targeted, and it's a free effect that you're already getting a pretty solid playable minion off of is really good. Um, obviously, you could use it in a freeze deck, basically like Ice Mage plus Ice Lance for 4 mana, put out a 3-4, deal 4 damage, pretty good. Um, would be played on a lot of mage decks. Could it even be argued it could be played in any mage decks. Because freeze, it's good for tempo mages. Because your opponent has less options to respond. It's good for freeze mages. Because you reduce the damage it's incoming. It's just overall really strong. And probably would be played too of in most decks. Undead mage. 1 mana, 2, 1. Death rattle. Add a random 1 cost spell to your hand. Uh, basically a 1 mana card that gets you a free other card. Is already going to be incredibly strong. So I'd just say this is... A top tier pick. It's like in the realms of a Lepronome, I would say. And Lepronome was really good. Played in like every aggro deck when it had two attacks. So kind of the same thing. Probably should be a one attack minion, honestly. And even then it might be too strong. 
Nathanos Blight Caller or Bright Caller. Five mana four four Hunter Legendary. Battle cry give all minions on board random death rattles. Um that can be a downside to you, of course, because you can give your opponents death rattles. It's a five mana minion, so it's kinda hard to set up as well. If you have the perfect scenario where it's like you have four beasts on the board and you're trading for your opponent's minions and you get that ideal scenario to play it, then yeah, it'll be really good. But if you're already that far ahead, do you really need a card like this? Probably not. Probably not good enough to really be run. In all honesty, it's just like a win more card. So too much. Uh, the one exception I would think is if you're trying to go face against your opponent and... Your opponent has to trade, and then you're going to get all those death rattles where you just keep going face, and it punishes your opponent for having to trade into you, then maybe, but I, I don't know. Seems weak. Peck Wolf. Three mana, five, two, charge. Can only attack if a beast attacked earlier this turn. Um, pretty much game-breaking. It's like a better huffer that is always huffer. Um, getting an extra beast to attack this turn is really not that. hard um build a deck that's built around this kind of thing like unleash the hounds and then you throw in a pack wolf and then maybe you throw in like a uh i don't know maybe even timber wolf or something on top of that and then you just get a lot of really strong honestly so five two three mana charge probably game breaking it just makes hunter even better at almost guaranteeing a kill just by playing out the hand so too strong Four mana, four four swiping bear battle kai deal one damage to all enemies. Uh, pretty strong overall, I would say. It's kind of like having a, a ravaging goal, but has no downside. But cost one more mana. Oh yeah, I would say swiping bear aggressive class. Uh, definitely controlling the board a little bit is not a bad thing. I mean mid range hunter especially, maybe even. Aggro Hunter. I mean, you probably wouldn't play it in a face Hunter. Or would you? Maybe. Anyway, super strong. Uh, fetch. Two mana. All enemy minions that die this turn give your minions uh, plus one, plus one. If you play that with Unleash the Hounds, it becomes pretty damn game-breaking, I think. Uh, for five mana, like, you're playing against a Zoo Warlock. You Unleash the Hounds. You play Fetch. You have, like, one minion on board already. You trade a bunch, and then you end up clearing the entire board and having a few... 3-3 three, three, or 4-4 four, four doggies. Uh, insane comeback mechanic. Um, doesn't even have to be played with Unleash the Hounds necessarily. Just like if you kill two minions and you have one or two dudes on your side of the board, then it's already getting a lot of value. If you can get like plus three or plus four of stats from this, it's super good. Uh, considering this standard would be plus two, plus two for two mana. Okay, six mana Yorel. 1-1, uh, one, one, charge battle kai. Destroy friendly minion and gain the stats from it. So there are several ideas that come to mind. One is you destroy your Leroy and you basically play a second Leroy and charge at the opponent's face again, giving um, Paladins kind of like an extra option. Uh, kind of to answer like a Reno lock type thing. Um, it's a charge minion, so like any minion you already have on the board, you can basically just double its attack. So if you have like... A Ragnar, well, Ragnar is probably not the best example, but like a Tyrion, and Tyrion hits face, and then you destroy Tyrion, you deal an extra 7 damage to the face, and then the uh, the Sun Blade, whatever it's called, hits for another 5, that's 6 plus 7 plus 5, which is something like 18 damage. That's pretty, there's nothing else on board, and you don't have any buffs, like, you could use this to double the effect of a blessing. Of my adding an extra minion for the purpose of finishing your opponent off, but kind of control boy until it's time to finish the game. So I don't see why you couldn't do the same thing with your L. Um, seems pretty strong, yeah. In that kind of late game paladin deck that's going for a burst finish. Hand of sacrifice, heal a minion to full health, and your hero takes damage based on the amount hero. Uh, so, I think this card is not very good, because Shaman have a card that it's called Ancestral Healing, zero mana, restore minion to full health, and give it taunt with no downside, and that is pretty much never played. I get it, it's a different class, but generally speaking, I don't think this would be good enough to justify. 
Like, would you really play Zero Mana to heal a minion rather than just put, like, like, uh, Earth and Ring Farce? I don't think it is. <laughs> I think you'd sooner play Earth and Ring Farce here. Three mana, Divine Purifier, two, four, Battlecry on Silence, a minion. This is pretty much garbage because Silence is rare enough right now that this is rarely going to do anything, and a two, four. Is not very good. Fifth would have to be at least something like a three four because the battle cry is so niche that it's rarely gonna happen. Um, yeah, and beyond that, a lot of those silence effects aren't really gonna be that relevant either. It's like in the one in ten scenarios where you can unsilence a minion, it's like the silence. Oh no, it silenced your harvest golem or something. If you unsilence it, you can still get the death rattle for a two one minion. At best, you're on silence like a can or a Sylvanas or something, but yeah. M maybe in an Azoth deck if silence was more prevalent, but really, it's not really necessary, and Blizzard doesn't really like silence anyway, so probably would never see much play. Silverhand Commando, 5 mana. 3-3, three, three, gain plus 1. Um, it's kind of an average card. I think if you play it in a Just a Card True Heart Paladin deck, then you can just hero pass. If you're getting more than that, like three or four silver hand recruits on the board for a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7, seven, seven, not that likely, and even at that point, it's not really that impressive anyway. So this card probably wouldn't see play, because it's hard to get it to that point where it's good, and then even when it's good, it's not that good. So and a 4-4 four, four rogue stealth minion can attack one without losing it's basically going to happen here. Either your opponent has the answer to it, like a Deadly Shot or a Flame Strike, and you're going to be very sad and pretty much lose the game, or the Rogue is going to play double Cold Blood and hit you twice for 12 damage, and there's really nothing you can do about it because it was stealthed. Maybe even with Wind Fury somehow. Well, Rogues don't have a way to give a minion Wind Fury yet. Anyway, I, I kind of feel it's kind of like in the same realm as like a Gadget Sand Auctioneer where it's not very interactive. It's just kind of like, oh, they played the Gadget Sand Auctioneer. I guess I lose. Or, oh, they played the Zul'jin. Or, I guess I'm guaranteed to take 24 damage, so I better put down a Taunt minion. But yeah, what if the other guy puts down a Taunt minion? You better have Sap or it's like, oh, Zul'jin attacked into a Sludge Belcher. Woo. And now he's dead. But generally speaking, I think that kind of card, it's just not very fun to play against because it's it's uninteractive. It's like your opponent doesn't have the taunt, they don't have the deadly shot, they don't have the flame strike, so I guess they just lose. Fun. And, and it's, that especially applies if you, like, faceless manipulator it, and it's like, oh, two stealth minions I can't do anything about. Weapon Thief. Three mana, two, three, destroy your weapon and give this minion the stats from it. Um... Interesting, like if you do it off of a one charge deadly poison, then it becomes like a 5-4, which is pretty good for three mana. Uh, given you did have to sacrifice a deadly poisoned weapon, but overall, I, you know, in a lot of cases, it's probably okay to do that. It's not like you're getting an insane amount of value, but if you need to switch to another weapon in the same turn, like you want to put out an assassin's blade, but you don't want to lose the deadly poison and you don't want to swing at the opponent's face, then it could be good in that scenario. Maybe too niche though. I mean, like weapon heavy rogues haven't really been a thing, especially since blade flurry is no longer a thing. So half the time this would just be like a three mana, two, three or five mana, three, five. And uh, by using the hero power, of course. And either way, it's not really that spectacular. So I don't know. If it was like destroy your opponent's weapon and give it the stats from it, and maybe it was a 2 2. Or maybe if it was just destroy your opponent's weapon and give it the stats from it, then it would be uh, fair. But I think generally. Um. Yeah, it's not super good. It's okay. It's an interesting concept. Trick of the trade one mana rogue spell, give a friendly minion the attack from your weapon. The attack will be lost at the end of the turn, so you can play that with Zol'jin, or you could play it with a Poisoned Blade, and that's a joke, of course, because no one would ever play Poisoned Blade. But, uh, basically it's like a second Cold Blood that's not as good. Can be used with Gadget Sand Auctioneer for more card draw. Can be used for more burst potential, and either way, it's not a super exciting card. It's kind of like just a bad Cold Blood, generally. 
Which, yeah, if you're going to play your Vogue that's trying to one-shot your opponent, then sure, you might play it. Otherwise, why not just play Cold Blood, basically? Grave Robber, 4 mana, 3, 5. Whenever a minion dies, you get a coin. That is pretty ridiculous. Uh, the 4 mana Tomb Pillager, 5, 4, Death Rattle, get a coin, is already incredibly strong, played in every single Rogue deck currently. But if you get a coin whenever any minion dies, well, that's even better, because that might mean two minions are going to die before this dies, and you might get a third coin because this dies itself. Um, don't know if that also includes this minion it itself. Maybe not, because it's not a death rattle. I guess that's the downside. But overall, it seems really strong. You might just play it with Tomb Pillager as well. I mean, what rogue doesn't need more coins? You just turn them all into extra card draw for gadgets and auctioneer. Just a really solid rogue minion that probably would be one of the core components of Gadgets and Auctioneer deck. Or pretty much any rogue deck in general. Because it's just solid on its own. 5 mana. Uh, Farseer Nabundo. 5-5. Five, five. Overload 1. So it's kind of like a 6 mana minion. Set an enemy's attack to 1. Um, overall it's a solid minion. I don't really like the concept though. Because it's basically just taking what paladins do best. And giving that to shaman as a one-off option. Um, I get that it would help control shamans out, but it's really touching in the territory of other classes, and I don't think that's a good thing. It's like if you gave combo to warrior or something like that. It would just be weird and take away the class definition of other classes. So, giving shamans what's effectively an Aldor Peacekeeper, I'm not such a fan of that idea, but as a card, I guess it's pretty solid, and you probably would play one of it. Well, I mean, you can only play one of it as a legendary. Summoning Totem, 2 mana overload 1, zero, 3 at the end of your turn, summon a random 1 cost minion. It's kind of like a cheap version of a Summoning Stone. Where it's like, if you can control the board and you're pretty confident your opponent doesn't have a charge minion to take care of this, then generally speaking it's going to get some value. It's going to force your opponent to use a removal spell on it, and it's going to get you a free minion. And if they don't kill it, then they can really get punished because they'll get multiple free minions off of it. Uh, so overall, it's pretty okay. It's pretty fine. It's kind of in the same vein as a Mana Tide Totem. Um, if you can do anything to protect it, it has the potential to kind of scale out the game and just win. Pretty good with Bloodlust as well, and pretty good in a Totem deck, I think. Um, I mean, you could consider running cards like, uh, what's, what's it called? Totemic. Uh, the one that gives plus one, plus one for every Totem you have. That could make this a threat, or it could make another totem a threat, and you can get extra benefit off of that totem synergy. Totem Caller, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, death battle, summon a random totem. Um, kind of iffy. Well, it's okay-ish. The, the problem is the opponent probably is going to just be able to deal with it immediately, because they're not going to trigger it otherwise. Um, versus like a totemic, Tuscar totemic, which is a 3 mana, 3-2, three, summon a totem immediately. Um, that, that can be used more proactively. I, I think there's a major downside to having it be a, uh, death rattle like this. So 4-4 four, four stats may be making it too bad of a card to really justify. You'd probably pick it in an arena, but I don't think it would make it into constructed. Clint Spirit. One mana, deal one damage for each overload crystal you have. Uh... So what you could do is play this in like a Maligo stack. Uh, one mana, deal five damage, plus extra damage for each overload crystal. Actually, you would definitely go in a Maligo stack, because you would love it. Well, hmm. Depends on how many Emperor Tharzans you get off, right? So let's say you Emperor Tharzan, this becomes zero mana, you have a Lightning Bolt, and maybe you get a Lava Burst off as well. So it kind of becomes Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, and then you deal three damage with this for zero mana. Plus five for Maligos. And yeah, and that kind of deck it would be very powerful. Um, just without the Maligos, though, uh, it's kind of okay ish. I don't know. You'd have to be playing a lot of overload cards to really make it great. But it, in any case where it can do over two damage for one mana, it's probably going to be pretty good. But I think it would mostly go in Maligos decks. So. That might not actually be something you really want to see in the game. Because Maligos can already be pretty ridiculous. And do you really want it to be more of like, a, well, one churn, I just play eight cards for zero mana and you die. 
unfortunately looks like this one was lost there. Uh, I, I think I recall from earlier that it was a... Let me try refreshing the page. The Warrior Legendary. Okay, there we go. Black Cigar the Red. 9 mana, 4, 12, taunt any damage this minion takes, the enemy hero takes also. Uh, it's very powerful. I mean, taunt has kind of fallen out of the game in a lot of ways because Sludge Belcher isn't really there, but 12 health for an average opponent to go through, like a zoo or an aggro shaman, is gonna they're going to have a really tough time answering this. Like, if Silence doesn't have a comeback, then basically they have to lose the game by going up against this. So it gets to turn 9, which admittedly lots of games would end between, before that, but also admittedly less so for Warrior because the Warriors are good at stalling. Then they have to go through 12 damage and take 12 damage themselves. And what happens when, like, any aggro deck takes an extra 12 damage? Well, basically, Grimash, Hell Scream, Inner Rage, and they die the next turn. So, if you can play Brox to go at the red and you've kind of stalled out the game, then this is kind of like sealing the deal. It's like, okay, you don't have an instant kill spell, so you're guaranteed to die now. Because they have to go through 12 damage, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, you could also compare it to Slogoth the Slitherer, which is a 9 mana 5 9 taunt, but it doesn't have any. Your opponent's hero takes extra damage. It just has. Um, uh, basically, I think it was. It, it, it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. But honestly, if your opponent's playing slow enough, like a slow enough deck where they have a hex or something like that, and you got to turn 9 as the control warrior, then it doesn't really matter if it got hexed, because. Those kind of decks, they already have other cards, and if they hex this instead of your Yosera, or instead of your Cthune, or instead of your Grimash Hellscream, then they're pretty much equally as screwed. So it's fine against control decks, because it's a big removal target that they basically have to deal with, and it's fine against aggro decks, because aggro decks have to go through the 12 damage, which just makes this a super strong minion, and probably borderline game-breaking. Armored Warrior, 3 mana, 3-2, three, taunt, uh, battle cry, gain 1 health for each armor you gain this turn. So, um, if you play armor smith, so, or you play, I don't know, shield block or something like that, it has the potential to be really, really big. Um, 3 mana, 3, three mana, 3-2 three, would kind of suck, but generally you're going to hold on to it until you can make it big. So, so yeah, you would just play this in a control warrior deck. You'd get a lot of armor, and then you'd have a three mana taunt that gets like uh, three eight or three six or at least a three five or something like that, while giving you extra health as the warrior too. It just overall makes it so that um, basically warrior is even tougher to kill, and it's already very hard to go through a control warrior with just a card true heart. If there's one one deck that can stall Tail Fatigue, it's the Warrior. So they really need another big-ass taunt in the way, in addition to Broxigar the Red. I think this card's probably too strong overall. Um, like, if the Warrior gets this out with a shield block, they just basically win because it's another 7 health that you have to trade all your minions into. Okay, Intervene. 1 mana. All f damaged friendly minions take this turn your hero takes instead. So you would probably... I mean, you would use this for trading or something like that, right? Uh, so you trade all your minions in. The hero takes damage. And... Um, yeah, your minions just get to make trades. So it's kind of like a commanding shell, actually. It's just one less mana and without the card draw. Now, if it also means, like, your opponent's turn, like, until the start of your next turn, then that might make it a little bit better. But I think probably this card's not really good enough, right? Unless... Uh, no, I can't really see it. I probably would play Commanding Shout over it, because Commanding Shout also cycles your card and doesn't make you take damage as the hero, just leaves you with a bunch of one-elf minions. And Commanding Shout isn't really viable. So, not so great. Okay, 3 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Shadow Pan Warrior. This minion can only attack if it has Taunt. Uh, so, that's uh, pretty decent. It's uh, kind of encouraging making a Taunt Warrior deck, which probably is okay-ish. Um, Bolster, as you would already know, is a 2 mana. Give all your minions plus 2, plus 2 if they have Taunt. 
So you play this with, say, a uh, sparring partner, which gives a friendly minion taunt, and then you have a 3-2 taunt and a 4-4 taunt. And then you, uh, you play these other taunts up here, and you play Defender of Argus or Sun Fairy Protector, and then your whole board is taunt, everything is taunt, and... Uh, yeah, it just seems like it would be making Warrior even more defensive as a class and even harder to get through. Um, how do you kill a Warrior that has 50 health and 4 taunt minions in the way? Kind of got to wonder about that. So, these three cards just, you know, Control Warrior is already super strong. And that's what you got to keep in mind whenever you release mega powerful cards. So, uh, yeah, that's all the cards by Mumu Brown. Um, overall, I think it's uh, pretty interesting in terms of the cards that were here, but a lot are just way too strong. Pack Wolf, probably at the top of that list. Um, I, I get the whole idea of you want cards to be competitive, but it's like, how many more Dr. Booms do you want to release, really? Pushing all the old cards out. Is that what you want? I don't know. But in any case, I've been Dark Skeleton, so thanks for taking a look at these cards. Uh, I guess I'll put the link to these down in the description so you can go ahead and check them out if you're interested. And until my next video, I'll see you then.